came back from my walk because it started raining. But the rain's a blessing because it's making my head feel better. I mean, I've had a headache for the past couple of days of Lori McBride's either manipulating the pollen count or or she's uh, um, dropping more bombs and the rain seems to be clearing the air out. But um, I just the reason I'm making this video is because the Lord has shown me that he is making, that he is doing a lot of signs telling me that, yes, Gail, you will be moving to Texas. Um, first of all, over the past six months, I seem to have developed a Texas accent. And I don't, I don't know where it came from. So I presume the Lord gave it to me, and that's one of the many signs that I'm going to be going out to Texas. Uh, I, I don't listen to people. This I live in Central Florida. People in Central Florida don't have a Texas accent, so I have no idea where I picked up this accent. The other sign is um, Dr. Andy Woods is my favorite preacher outside of my husband, Brent Spiner. Brent Spiner is a Texan, by the way. <laughs> and then Matthew McConaughey's on my marriage list, and he's a Texan, too. But... Um, Dr. Andy Woods right now is a pastor at a church, Sugarland Bible Church in Sugarland, Texas. And I, I like to listen to him because he's a very good Bible teacher and he helps me with my research for my novel, Silver Skies. And lo and behold, this past weekend, he made a special trip to Florida where I currently live in Tampa. And usually when he makes trips, he'll post out his Twitter, you know, the messages that he's speaking at where he's a guest speaker somewhere else. So I like to keep up with him because he's a really good Bible teacher. So I listened to the message and um, he was preaching a message about how God was protecting Israel during the tribulation. And um, so the, the whole message was about protection. And in the middle of the message, he said, in my devotions, I have with my daughter, I happen to be in Genesis about the story of Joseph, where, uh, uh, jo where God told Jacob to go to Egypt to be reconciled with his son, Joseph. And Jacob thought Joseph was dead all these years because his brothers, you know, played a dirty trick on their, they were jealous of Joseph. And actually, I have problems with jealousy myself with my horrible sister. And it was time for a reconciliation after many years. And um, the Lord was saying, this story applies to you, Gail. The Lord seems to be telling me that he wants me to retire in Texas and that it's going to be in Texas where Brent and I are going to be able to live as a married couple. Now, I don't know if the marriage to Brent's going to happen right away when I move to Texas. But apparently the next step in God's plan for my life is to move to Texas. And um, so I just thought, wow, look, look at this. This preacher all of a sudden goes to Florida. He's in the same place in his devotions that I'm at. And the message was all about protection. That's another sign. And, and the, preacher's, <clears throat> the preacher's church is in Texas. So that's another sign. So you might say, oh, that's just a coincidence. Or maybe he knows you or something. No, no, I haven't been communicating with him. The Lord did it. Now he used him to give me a sign. And it's pretty interesting that we're both in the same spot in our devotions. I'm also reading out a Bible for Tribulation Saints to get guidance. And so I consider that part of the canon. So I read from the traditional Bible, and then I read from Bible for Tribulation Saints. And then I combine what I get from both of those to help me to make the right decisions. And everything that I'm reading in my devotions is telling me that God's getting ready to move me. And he wants me to have faith. And that he's going to make it so that I can continue to do the Gale Commandments through the move. So this month, because Sally Beauty Supply, did I mention? Yeah, Sally Beauty Supply. I ordered some shampoo and cream rinse. And it was already on sale. It was buy one, get one 75% off. And I ordered four bottles for about, they're about seven bucks per bottle or about six fifty per bottle. And I ordered four bottles. Uh, buy one, get one, 70% off. So that'd be a total of eight bottles. So the order was actually worth about $45. But I got it on sale for $30. But still, you know, I'm really tight this month because I've lost some of my major financial support. So I thought, well, I'll barely make my $100 savings this month. 
Well, lo and behold, I went and checked how much money I have in my PayPal account. And it was $20 over what it should have been. So I said, something's not right here. And I found out that that Sally Beauty uh, sale where I got about $45 worth of shampoo and cream rinse for hot for about 30 ended up being about $11. So I saved for some reason my Sally Beauty order came out even cheaper than the sale price. So I bought about $45 of high quality. It's kind of like the equivalent of um, BioLage Matrix because I I've got this menopause hair, so I use uh, I get the Sally Beauty brand equivalent of BioLage Matrix for color treated hair to do my to shampoo and cream rinse my hair because I shampoo and cream rinse every day because I go out for a walk and get all sweaty and get all this pollen in my hair, so I shampoo and cream rinse every day. So I needed a high quality um, shampoo and cream rinse so my hair doesn't look like a frizz bomb, you know. And I, wow, I couldn't believe it. You may say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that Sally Beauty is based in Denton, Texas. That's a suburb of, like, kind of north of Fort Worth. It's another sign, another sign that God used a Texas-based company to save me. I wasn't expecting that. I don't know if my men contacted Sally Beauty or if the Lord did something. <coughs> That's another sign. Let me tell you another sign. Um, back in the 1990s, um, so I, here I am. I've got a Texas accent that I can't get rid of. Um, Dr. Andy Woods ends up in the same place in his devotions that I'm at. And it was this story of Joseph that spoke to me, that the Lord used to tell me that I was going to move. He said, just like Jacob needed to move to Egypt to protect his family, I need to move you to Texas, Gale, to protect you. Uh, he was telling me, Florida is no longer a safe place for you. He says, I want you to move to Texas. And, and he said, I'm going to cover all the expenses. Uh, that means I'll be getting a, probably a new car within the next couple months. And the Lord did tell me that he was going to get me a new car. In fact, in 2017, I ended up spending money on auto repair. And Jesus said, boy, you just ran over the Gale commandments when you spent about $900 to get new tires and a new starter. He said, Gail, if you had had patience and had faith in me, I could have got you a new car. So that's going to come later. That's what he told me. Now, that was in 2017. So apparently later is now. So I'm in 2019. And I've been do I've had my car actually is pretty has got rust spots on it, which my men told me not to worry about. And right now the whole instrument panel is out. I can't see what speed I'm going. I can't see how much gas is in the tank. But I remember Jesus said, "Don't spend." And when I do my automatic transmission, I had to put a a, a postcard up there that said. P R N D, you know, one, two, so I know exactly where I'm going because I can't see the panel. The we have like an electrical short circuit there. And I said, I'm not gonna violate the Gale Commandments. Because I asked Lord, well my car won't start unless uh, right away. He said, What did you want me to do? You know, back then I had starter issues. He said, Yeah, did you want me to just keep try starting it till it started? He said, Yes, Gail, yes. So I thought, well, I already know he doesn't want me to fix this electrical problem, so I haven't fixed it. And um, so I haven't disobeyed him. So I, I, I told my man, it appears you're going to be moving me to Texas. And as you know, I got a 1999 car falling apart, and it's not, not safe for a long distance trek. So if you, if 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 I'm right that God wants me to move to Texas, you're going to have to get me a new car. And the Lord seems to be saying that will happen. So the first, so anyways, um, I got this Texas accent, Sally Beauty from Denton, Texas. Gave me a super big discount on shampoo and cream rinse that helped me to do the Gale com Commander for saving hundred dollars this month, um, uh, and then also Andy Woods, his message, um, and how we talked about how where he was in his devotions. He probably thought that was just incidental, but the Lord used him, who has a church based in the Houston area, and who was visiting Florida at the time. <clears throat> the Lord used him to give me another sign. And now here's another one that's pretty significant. This is going back in the 1990s. But Brent Spiner called me up on my phone and starting 
actually, he called me up when I was in Florida, that about 1989, 1990, and I pick up the phone, and there was a blank at the other end, and he was there, but he never said anything. So I would just hang up. I'd say, I'd pick up the phone. This is this was back when landlines were king. I didn't have a cell phone. I'd pick up my phone and say, hello. Nobody there. But somebody was listening. So I just hung up. That was Brent, I found out later. You see, I started writing him at his Star Trek fan mail address, and he was reading my mail, and he took an interest in me. And I gave him my telephone number, and he would call up at, for several years and just not say anything. But then I moved to Seattle, and I was closer to him. And then, finally, when I lived in Seattle, we just moved there from Miami. We, my, I was married to a Coast Guard guy. And I picked up the phone. We were having a revival at my church. And he said, I want to rape you. But, and I hung up on him. I mean, you know, here I am, a church girl, going to church three times a week. Wow, who's this? I thought, this guy, he sounded like he knew me, though. Well, then about a month later, I got uh, his new music album at the time, All Yellow Eyes, is back in the mail from one of my Christian friends who was also a Star Trek fan. And I listened to that, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I love this guy's Texas style of singing. He said, nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. <clears throat> and I thought, oh, and then when he sang time after time, I tell myself that I'm so lucky. I thought that voice is an exact match to this guy who's calling me on the phone and saying he wants to make love to me and kiss me. And I thought, oh my God, that's Brad Spider who's calling me on the phone. I wrote him a letter that says, I figured out you're my mystery caller. I said, I adore you, but I can't be with you. It's against my moral convictions, but we, can we still be friends? Oh, the phone rang off the hook the next day after that. I mean, it just rang and rang. And I pick it up. He's, he said, can I come over? I said, no, I'm sorry. I can't. It wouldn't be right. He says, oh, why not? He said, I said, no, it wouldn't be right. I'm sorry. And then he would just gently click the phone. That was Brent. Well, what happened was... Um, I could tell he was in love with me, but I couldn't go to him because I said, Jesus, if I go to him, I want to go with your blessings. And if I went now, it wouldn't be with your blessings. It would make you look bad because I'm a married woman. I said, why, Lord, did you bring this dream man into my life when I'm married? I'm mad at you. <laughs> so I used, to, I used to stay up and pray with him. I said, oh, Jesus, I don't understand you. I don't understand this at all. It doesn't make any sense. Well, later I figured it out. He had to bring, he, you know, to be honest with you, in my 19, when I was in my 20s, I would, if Brent Spiner talked to me like that, I would have kicked him out for good, and he never would have heard from me again for eternity, man. I mean, he would have been gone for good. Any guy who called me up like that on the phone. But as a result of being married to a pedophile, or I didn't know it at the time, but somebody who made love like, you know, like kissing the wall. I really appreciated all the feeling that he put into his words when he spoke to me. And I saw past his words and I saw his soul. And then we were having revival at our church at that time. And it was so funny. I was, and, and, and I mean, this was a real revival. People were getting right. People were going to the front and confessing their sins. I mean, it was good. right in the middle of the revivals when the G -G Brent, Brent called me. But what was really strange was in the revival, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Gail, I have brought Brent into your life. And that still small voice in my heart, he said, this is part of my plan for you. And I approve of your love for him. The only thing I ask is that you don't go to him now. Now is not the time. But I want you to maintain your friendship. And lo and behold, our next duty station, when we moved from, when we were transferred out of Seattle, was Galveston, Texas, out of 122 possibilities. And I didn't let my husband know that Brent and I were communicating. That was a sign. I, Looking back, I believe that G, the reason Jesus had us transferred to the Houston area, we ended up living in the Houston metro area, and my husband would drive to Galveston to go to work as a Coast Guard guy. I believe the, re the reason he had us transferred there was because he wanted that to be a sign of, of where Brent and I would have time together and time to spare, like in that song somewhere that he gave me from West Side Story.